So you guys asked me what I was thinking in 2002, whether I thought that I would be playing Warcraft 3 20 years later, because today is the 20 year Reign of Chaos anniversary. July 3rd, 2002, the game came out. And just a little over a year later, I was a pro gamer and I joined my first team. In 2002, I tried out the game, didn't like it that much, went back to StarCraft 1, but my friends were playing Warcraft 3, so I tried it again. Previously, and don't tell anyone, my brother had actually had an illegal key of Warcraft 3, and he tried it out that way, and we both tried it, and we were like, eh. Then, later, the game released. Don't... Don't tell me. I don't, I don't support it, but... Gonna throw my brother under the bus here. Which... So, anyway, we, uh, we was playing... Uh, for the second time, and then it was actually kind of fun. We started figuring out that it's a deep game where you can counter things with other things. Of course, we played StarCraft 1, but the whole era aspect and the, the bloodlust kind of buffs and stuff, that was new. Still, did I think that we were going to be here 20 years later with an audience of 3,000 live viewers, with YouTube channels and Twitch channels and pro gaming and pro streaming? No, I did not think that. And here we are. But not just vague ideas have I got about the future in the past. I don't just have vague ideas back then that I wasn't going to do it. I actually have some written evidence that I didn't think so. Here's an interview from uh, 22 September on esreality.com. I'm kind of happy that it's still around. First off, t please tell us a bit about yourself. Name, location, interest, etc. I, I, I don't remember this, but I just Googled 2002 Grubby, 2003 Grubby. So let's check it out. My name is Manuel Schenkhuizer and I come from the Netherlands. I do some fitnessing and of course Warcraft 3. I usually just play one game at a time, so I don't play any other games currently. <laughs> they asked me about all my interests. <laughs> it's just Warcraft and fitness. And it's true, back then with another brother, not the illegal CD key, not the illegal CD brother, but another brother, he was really into fitness. I was 16, 17, and he would ask me to come along, and I did. I think it's the most buff I've been. And uh, you you wonder where it has gone, but back then, we went like three days a week, one and a half hours per time. I was still in high school. I was doing Warcraft 3 high school and fitness, and that was pretty much that. That was my life. No girlfriend, no boyfriend, no pets, just Warcraft 3, fitness, eating, sleeping, and high school. All the energy went into the game. So what games did you play before you started playing Warcraft 3? I used to play a lot of different simple games when I was very young. But the good games I've played would be something called Fantasy Empires, which no one knows. But apart from that, pretty much all the Blizzard games. Starting from Warcraft 2, then the Beyond the Dark Portal expansion, Starcraft, Brood War, Diablo, Diablo 2, their expansion sets, and eventually Warcraft 3, smiley face. How would you describe your playstyle? I wouldn't see myself as the best microer, nor with the best strategies, but somehow I win some important games. <laughs> That's nice. So I think it might have something to do with pretty much all around efficiency. I'm a bit of a perfectionist, so I don't like it if I have inactive peons, for example, or one grunt out of battle forgotten. So I train myself to not forget the little things. You're currently one of the best in Europe. So I think in 22 September 2K3, I had just joined Four Kings. Let me think. 2003, I played four LAN tournaments, if I recall correctly. Three or four LAN tournaments. ESWC 2K3 in July in Poitiers, France. I was in ESO Dotanel, a Dutch clan that had amazing sponsorship because they paid our 50 euro ticket to a bring your own computer event twice, I think. And we got a t-shirt, which was really cool. So, and uh, most of all, it was a group of friends. So when I got the uh, invitation to join Four Kings and to play in the very highly esteemed WC3L, the Warcraft 3 League by the German studio Turtle Entertainment, which are now ESL. I had to choose between friends and career. 
I don't know if you, I, I bet many of you have had to make that decision before, either because you had to move for your work or because you didn't have to move city, but you had to move job. It was a decision between friends and career. And I really wanted to join 4K and take my level to the next level, but I really wanted to stay in ESO.nl as well. And that was comfortable and it was familiar and it was Dutch, Dutch pride and whatnot. And I did lose contact with those guys in ESO.nl. So if you guys are out there and you're, you're watching, hit me up, Smurf, Will. You have had to make that decision, it's brutal. Yeah, I found it really hard. I asked advice from a lot of family and friends. But in the end, I did get recommended and I do agree that I should join Four Kings and I did. So in September, I think I had played two LAN tournaments, namely uh, ESWC 2K3 in Poitiers, France, and then the Samsung Euro Championship. But back then I think it was called the Euro Cyber Games. And this was in Either it was in October or August or something, or maybe even September. And I may or may not have been 4K. And I, I think I made top 16 on each. And then WCG 2K3 came around. For that one, I was 4K already. So, uh, yeah. So you're currently one of the best in Europe. It's a known fact that you have to practice a lot to stay one of the best, like every other top player. How would you describe your practicing routine? I think I don't practice very much. I mean, I was in school. I started practicing a lot more after school. I usually think a lot about my losses and I'm determined not to lose to the same strategy twice or again, or losing by using a wrong strategy. So I watch the replays where I lose and also where I win to compensate for practicing less. I don't quite know why I play so little, as you can see by my stats added up compared to the rest of the top 20. But I'm pretty busy with school also at the moment. Can you talk about practicing today, AOE 4 or Stormgate when it comes? Yeah, we'll, we'll save that for another time. We could talk about this for a long time. If people are actually your friends, they want what's best for you and your trajectory. Yeah, of course that's true. But like sometimes you have friends that could grow to be better friends, but they don't grow to be better friends yet because you stop investing time in them because you're too busy with career. And uh, I think that's that's fair. <laughs> so I knew that I'm not going to really have time for them to. What is a good quality? What is a good quality Warcraft 3 match in your opinion? What is a fun Warcraft 3 match for you? Any match that I win is fun. Carrot, carrot. But a good quality match is where I think to myself that a player has beat the odds. I'm not going to begin about balance, but when a player wins, where the statistics even say he shouldn't have, I can grin. So I think I had more respect uh, for losing to an undead as orc, or let's say losing to an undead or orc as human in Reign of Chaos, than I would for, let's say, losing to a human in Reign of Chaos or to a night elf in, in TFT or something. A slightly off topic question. What type of girls, women do you prefer? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that at all. Intelligent ones, but I'm not going to say I don't like good looks. But I did notice I care a lot about intelligence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I hit the jackpot with that. <laughs> Skip fast. It could have been a lot cringier. I was 17. I was 17. It could have been so cringe. But I think this, I think this, is, this doesn't make me look too bad, luckily. <laughs> I, I like dumb ones, dumb hot ones. <laughs> that could have been, uh, that could have been sick. Let's get in the mood with some music. Uh, I was 17 here. Uh, what do you think of the difference between Warcraft 3 Classic and Warcraft 3 TFT? Well, apart from all the obvious changes, I think the most important difference is how luck can change the outcome of a game. I wonder what I'm going to say here. Luck can change the outcome of a game? Which one is more lucky? 
I feel like in classical Warcraft, one creepjack or even losing one hero could totally ruin you. When watching games from replays or from observing, you could just hear the oohs and ahs when a hero died in the beginning, because you know it's very bad. In TFT, I can't say exactly what changed with regards to that, but you have a lot more chance to recover from what used to be fatal blows. I think that makes a lot of sense. With how important it is to constantly get gold from your uh, your main hero, right? From any hero, if your hero is dead, one, no tavern revive. So you're literally not creeping. You can't get your hero back any quicker than, than normal because there was no tavern revive. And then two, Heroes need to level up so badly. You get so much gold from creeping that when it's dead, you're just like completely AFK in the game. So that makes a lot of sense. So TFT is better comeback mechanic. And do you think the Frozen Throne did the same for Warcraft 3 as Brood War did for Starcraft? Yeah, I think TFT has the same quality I had come to expect since Brood War. What do you think of the current racial balance? More or less than Rock? I can't comment on matchups that don't include an orc. It all depends a bit on the level of play that you engage on. I'd say for the average player, it's very hard to beat a night elf using Beastmaster or Warden, but at pro level, human has a bit of an advantage over orc. What would you like to see changed in, in TFT? More viable use of the Dark Ranger? An increased effectiveness of Earthquake. Just compare it to Stampede. Same cast, one quarter of the effect in most cases. Yeah, because Earthquake doesn't... Yeah, it's still... It's st Come on, Blizzard! 17 years! A lower stun rate of the Beastmaster Spirit Bears. The level 3 Spirit Hawk to do slightly less damage. Shadow Strike with a plus 2 second cooldown and maybe some vague possibility of ever being able to effectively use gyrocaptors or whatever they're called now. See, I didn't accept flying machines yet. And maybe a practical use when you leave and re-enter Battle.net to re remember all the ignored people. Yo, hands up! W3 Champions gave us this. Minus mute F slot number of the player. One, two, three. You could not ignore people, you could only D&D, &D, and then you could not listen to anyone. Yo, can we get Perm Ignore in Bnet, please? Mike Ibarra? Holly Longdale, please, thank you. And maybe being able to edit that list somewhere. Yup! Having a block list, luckily, is a thing in Hearts and StarCraft 2 and whatnot. Bet it is in Overwatch too, to see a block list. But it wasn't in Warcraft. Were you getting harassed a lot? Yep, every single day. It was always like... It was always like this. They were so freaking lazy to ask for a ranged team. They didn't even capitalize the acronym. Can you imagine how stupid it looks? At? At? Like, if they were any less lazy, I might be polite in my response. But I think I was just like, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I was so sick of it. And not very mature. <laughs> or they would like ask to join 4K. Like, can I join 4K? And again, it would piss me off if they didn't capitalize the K in 4K. We have a proper clan tag and it's 4K with the big K, not the small K. The big K. Thank you. Oh, God. So you're not bothered by the absolutely way too powerful Mountain King Stormbolt. No, that's not the first thing that comes to mind. No, but yeah, you can't deny it's very powerful. But I don't know if it should be more expensive to cast, have a lower stun rate or deal less damage. I'll leave that to the experts at Blizzard. Because we trust them. What are your thoughts on the neutral heroes? and mercenaries in Warcraft TFT. Well, I express my thoughts on neutral heroes, except how I like the idea. And I like the idea. Mercenaries are also very nice to play with because they mix with almost any army, but they should remove any and all places where you can buy mercs without having to clear the creeps. And I think anyone would agree. Well, I still think that should be the case. Definitely agree. 
What do you think is your current strongest opponent in your clan for kings? I think that would be 4k Kaj. It could be Kiko or Zeus, but Kiko has lagged from here to nowhere. And Zeus is messing around a bit, usually. And he's only recently started. Who do you think is currently your strongest opponent outside the clan? I can't be totally sure, because I haven't played against everyone. But I think my old friend Kawa, aka Envious. Uh, he was a human from uh, Denmark. Or Finland. Denmark or Finland? I don't remember. On rank 2 right now, he's a pretty strong opponent. Smiley face. Name one player from each battle net realm that you really respect. Showtime, of course, on Asia. Uh, for staying completely normal and friendly when I met him, even though he's obviously a very good player and maybe even a celebrity in his country. Yeah, I had very good memory of meeting him. First time we met, I was so nervous and shy. He was my hero. He was my biggest idol in the game. And uh, I didn't know how to say hi, but he said hi first. He's like, hi, are you grubby? I was like, <laughs> does he still play? I don't know. Uh, East Apex on East for surprising me with his random skills, taking out some very good opponents with different races and doing excellent audio commentaries. West, I don't know many people on West, but I'd have to say Myth Shaman. Oh, he was from Taiwan. I think Orc. For talking very funny, he's Chinese, question mark. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Cancel. <laughs> oh, they do talk so funny, those, don't they? Uh, and and beating me twice with, was in... This is from 2K3, okay? Yeah, that was a normal thing to say back then. Uh... For, and beating me twice with what was in Reign of Chaos, a very special tactic against my human. Headhunter Shaman, very cool. Oh, he did play Headhunters. Nice. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that build. Uh, on Europe, my home server, I would have to say Uber Elf for coming so high on ladder with Beastmaster only and still being able to whine about imbalance when he loses. See this game for evidence. <laughs> It's so funny because I didn't respect Uber Elf at all. I disrespected the hell out of him. He was a fucking Beastmaster abuser. Yeah, I thought he was skillless. And uh, I don't know why I added him to this list. I think I just wanted to be sarcastic on this final answer. While at the same time not giving credit to anyone. I was so ego. Let's watch it. Well, I don't, I don't know how to watch that anymore. Uh, what do you think of WCG? still using classic instead of tft yeah i remember i didn't agree on that i'll be practicing but i don't really enjoy playing classic anymore it's funny how we called it classic i thought we called it roc was uber elf dead man no was uber elf uh there was like one night elf beastmaster spammer that became savage in hearthstone i don't remember if he was uber elf or if that was someone else or or, or if he had a different name he may actually have been uber elf Savic from Hearthstone, he renamed. He used to be a Beastmaster spammer on Twisted Meadows. I'll be practicing, but I don't really enjoy playing Classic anymore. I don't expect to win much, but the journey and experience itself are worth it. Maybe I get lucky? That's so funny. I would never say that later anymore. Yes, that one, Docker Power. Yeah, Savic was a Warcraft, uh, was kind of pro at Warcraft 3. You can ask him about it, but like he's he's uh, rusty now. Yeah, I don't think I would ever say that anymore. Get rich brothers. Maybe I get lucky. But I had no expectations here yet, right? It's kind of a chill perspective. Do you think age is a factor in reaching the top, or does it not matter how old you are? Yeah, it's a matter, since people of my age, seventeen, might have difficulty joining big tourneys. <laughs> <laughs> I think they meant old age. Or or is that just me projecting now? <laughs> I think they meant if you're too old, but I meant like it's too young back then. People at of 17 might have difficulties joining big tourneys because of my because of school or dependence of parents. For example, I can't go to CPL Copenhagen because it would cost me three days of school in what is my exam year. Well, let's see how that one panned out.
Did I go? <laughs> Exam year, by the way. <laughs> okay, here's what happened. Here's here's what happened. Uh, early, wait, two. Oh, yeah. Okay, here's what happened. I asked for time off, and my principal actually allowed it. And then, like in 2009, I did a workshop for uh, charity at my school. So five years after I graduated from high school, five years later, I went back and taught people about Warcraft 3 as part of a small paid workshop that collected for charity for a country in Africa. And uh, I, I met my principal again and I said, I wanted to thank you for that time you gave me off to, uh, to, to attend a tournament. And I'm so surprised because I didn't think you would accept that. And he said, don't tell my colleagues. He was also my English teacher, very strict. Don't tell my colleagues. But I've always believed there's more to school than just a standard curriculum. And experiences like these grow you more than a several days at school. But just make sure, just had to make sure you finish your homework first. That was important to me. I was like, man, that's so cool. I said, thanks, man. So. Anyway, back in the back to the back to the past, I went to CPL Copenhagen. I got permission for that, which I didn't expect. And then for Cyber X Games, the first tournament I would end up winning, which was uh, January 2K4, half a year later, I asked permission again. This was like five months left until exams, whereas CPL Copenhagen, the, the one Liquipedia you're looking at, was like at the beginning of my finals year. And uh, this time he did not give permission. Even he had his limits. And then I was mysteriously sick for five days when I went to Las Vegas to play Cyber X games. So I had to remember, was this the one that I actually uh, skipped school for? No, I got permission for this one, but uh, I, I was mysteriously sick for Las Vegas. You would do the same thing in chat. Tell me you wouldn't do the same thing. I still graduated, okay? I graduate, graduated just fine. <laughs> cured, cured in Las Vegas. Was it COVID? No, it was not. So how did I do here? 3-0 in the group, and then? Is there a second group stage? Huh? How do I go 3-0 and then don't make it to the brackets? Maybe they didn't show the whole bracket. Oh, there we go. Uh, I beat Jin 2-0. Wait, who did I beat in groups? Plague, Canadon, and Jip Jap. Beat Jin, lost the survivor. And then uh, there's no loser bracket, actually. So that was it. That was it. That was lights out for me. Lost the survivor. But look at that wonderful top eight. Eight humans in top eight. What? Eight humans. Seems balanced. And this was Reign of Chaos, actually. Oh, this was Reign of Chaos. Right? Oh, actually, no, no, no. Frozen Throne already. It's funny, because I don't think Human was actually OP in uh, patch 112. I mean, I, w I wouldn't know for sure, but maybe it's just because it was right after Reign of Chaos and humans were just the best because all the best players picked human because they were the best in reign of chaos how much did i win at cyber x games i won 10k but they didn't pay out so i got nothing 3500 euro back then yeah that's quite a lot that would be like 10k euros now right uh do you ever think do you think the ever popular starcraft brood war asian community will switch to tft in the near future nope the main difference, as I see it, between StarCraft Brood War being so popular and Warcraft 3 not being so in Asia is calculating in the crowd's understanding of the game. StarCraft, wow, I was, I was pretty smart. I was pretty wise already. I'm proud of me. StarCraft is relatively easy to follow, even when you see it for the first time. A psionic storm. Yo, Rain, what up, dude? 
thanks for the 106 months. Uh, Starcraft is relatively easy to follow, even when you see it for the first time. A psionic storm may be called magic, but you can just guess what a crackling area of lightning bolts will do to Zerglings. But what amateur is going to understand the effect of Spirit Link? <laughs> yep. Yep. People still ask me that several times a year. Yo, Chrysly, thanks for the Prime. Appreciate it. But that, that's very true. That's, it's hard to watch as a layman. Also, StarCraft has always been a bit more fast-paced game with more back and forth. I think that's not crucial for the players themselves to enjoy the game. But it is for the crowd. And that's why Warcraft 3 will never be what StarCraft is in Asia. Maybe StarCraft 2? Oh, I knew they were going to do StarCraft 2! Uh, seven years before it came out and uh, four years before it was announced. Big hot take gamble, eh? But the funny thing is, we talked about the Asian community. But it really meant Korean. Because that's where Brood War is very popular. And the joke is, Warcraft 3 became more popular in China than Starcraft Brood War was in Korea. Perhaps not by percentage of the population, but it is by sheer volume of people that know and love the game. And perhaps not by the sponsorship and the professionalism around it either. Korea Brood War was ahead of Warcraft 3 in China in terms of professionalism, organization, and mainstream product, company, involvement, and sponsorship. But the amount of people in China that were a huge fan of Warcraft 3 dwarfed anything StarCraft Korea ever has had. Not percentually, but the absolute number. So that we could not anticipate, that Warcraft 3 would be that popular in China. Yeah, it's a big country. A thought on a related matter. Do you think TFT will last as long as Brood War? TFT will last as long, surely. Like Diablo lasts still. Oh, that aged very poorly. <laughs> Diablo. Uh, well, technically it's still lasting. In fact, it's like transferring your human consciousness into a vacuum cleaner. Instead of dying, you become a vacuum cleaner. Sure, it sucks. And it is a greatly diminished version, but you're still technically alive. I hope to become a vacuum cleaner at some day. And Diablo 1, 2, and 3 now are a vacuum cleaner. They have transferred their consciousness into their baby, into the next generation, Diablo Immortal. Which sucks. Big time. And it should bite the dust. But here it is, and it endures for what it's worth. But like I said, it's not going to reach the same level as Brood War. So what shadow of its former self will Warcraft 3 TFT be in three years, maybe? I don't think pro money tournaments will still be held in three years. What do you think, guys? 2006? Any pro money tournaments for Warcraft? Well, there were. But if I had said 2K10 or 11, I would have been right. I should have said eight years. Damn it. Final question. What do you think the future will hold for you in RTS Gamer? I will never become a full-time gamer. Because I don't want to. I really enjoy gaming, but I will always do school or work. Some people have just stopped <laughs> after school. And it's not weird that they can have a huge advantage in practice time over me. But that's the way it shall be. I'll try to get as far as I can, but I don't know if I will be playing any other games after Warcraft 3. Smiley face. Thanks for your time, Gravy. Any last words? My pleasure, smiley face. All right, my love goes out to Kaj, Blati, Kiko, Fury, Lon. All for not being able to come to WCG. I'm very sad about that. That's a weird way to phrase it. Then to my Dutch friends, Myth, Smurf, Linda, Cornine, Warthog, Zafix, AZ was crazy, who is a wannabe Dutch. And finally, he's Swedish. Finally, I could give a shout out to all the people I met at ESWC. But I won't, because I don't like general shout outs. They're too meaningless. Anyone that comes whining for having forgotten him in my shout out, 
slash ignore for you, which, if it was up to me, would be permanent. Damn it, Blizzard! Fix it! <laughs> That's... <laughs> That's a little edgy. <laughs> oh. Thanks. There we go. There we go. Slash ignore for you, Ace of Swords. Wow. What a trip. What a trip. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. Very good. Well, if you made it this far into the video, you should definitely subscribe. I found out that there's some people on my YouTube that watch the content all the way to the end, but still don't subscribe. And it's so easy. Just go down there. If you see the button subscribe, press it, and then hit that bell so that you know when next the video goes live. Otherwise, I won't pet my dog. Subscribe. There we go. I've always wanted to become a full-time gamer, but I never had the support of my parents. How did your parents receive the news that you wanted to become a full-time gamer? So I tricked them, basically. But I also tricked myself, as you see, right? Because I didn't think I was going to be it. And that was 2K3. But in 2K4, less than a year later, I convinced my parents to let me go on a one-year sabbatical. The confidence to do this was granted by my schoolmates. One of them was going to Australia for a year, planning to work there for half a year in order to earn their way back. Which was always weird to me thinking back to about it, because in my experience, return flights are much cheaper than single flights. I don't know why you can get double the, the flight for less cost. So that was always weird to me. But anyway, that's not really the point. They were going to Australia. They were going to work. So I, I, I said, uh, can I have a sabbatical as well? Because I don't know what to do yet. And I will say, I received zero guidance from my parents. They had a very hands-off approach. Uh, it's not how I would try to raise a child. I had no idea what to do in life. So... I didn't know what to do, and so I was like, can I uh, can I do gaming for a year? Because I'm starting to play tournaments, and I'm doing decent, but I'd like to do even better. And Las Vegas, the CyberX games that I won, that was right off the back of a two-week school holiday for, for Christmas. So practice time had a direct effect on my skill improving, and I wanted to know, do that not just for two weeks, but for a year. So... I don't think I ever really wanted to go to school anymore by that point because I had already tasted glory. Right? So it was kind of like a trick, just let me play for a year. But I don't think that I saw it as a trick. But when I think back, like, okay, maybe I didn't really believe that the study thing would work out because I just didn't see myself doing that. But buying time for a year was uh, wor working. So my mom said, sure, uh, anything you want freedom because she didn't really care uh what happens to me in my life and then uh my dad was like i think if you start pro gaming and like doing doing work and whatnot uh and and playing tournaments you'll find it so fun i don't think you will want to return to school afterwards that's my concern for you and uh, i said yeah i will i will i will and he's like well okay then you have my blessing that's it that's the story. So then I took my one year sabbatical and uh, a little bit before. So you have this sign up window for university. If this sign up university for uh, the sign up window for university where you have to apply to university and then you have to order your own books, which I didn't know uh, for uni because for high school, the school orders all for you. So you just get your books at home and then you go to school with your books. But turns out that's not true either. My parents got those books for me, but I didn't know that either. So that happened automatically. So I figured with the uni, it'll go automatically as well. I'm 18 now, not much excuse to be that dumb, but I guess nobody taught me and I never asked, right? So I signed up to an English university course Two weeks after the deadline ended, 
because I was procrastinating, procrastinating. And then sometimes my mother did like a half-hearted attempt to be like, you should sign up, deadline's coming up. I'm like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I just procrastinate, procrastinate, procrastinate. Deadline comes up. <laughs> deadline comes up. I didn't uh, sign up on time. Then like a week or two later, I figured it should be fine, right? I sign up, uh, visited a couple of unis, thought this one looks okay. I judged them by food and uh, distance to my house. Not really on the curriculum. And I figured I'll do English because it's easy and I like English. And then uh, I was like visiting an introduction class and they were like talking about literature and shit. I'm like, that's freaking boring. They were talking about Shakespeare and literature. I'm like, I don't want to learn literature. I was thinking I want to learn English. English, do you speak it, mother trucker? I just want to speak better English, better grammar, better spelling. I don't want any of that literature stuff. So I don't think I was as hot about learning English anymore as I initially thought. I thought it was going to be like the most okay, the least bothersome university course that I could possibly follow. But when I heard about like the thick books that we had to consume, I think I lost some of my appetite for it. So I procrastinated a lot, signed up two weeks late, waited for my books to arrive. They never did. Then on the first day of uh, university, like where everything begins, where my schoolmates and friends were talking about going and whatnot, and where I knew that in Utrecht, the city that I was going to be going in, I knew that everything was beginning. They had something called the introduction week for one week. Well, that's like a tutorial in a game. If you've watched me play new games, you'll know that I think tutorials are boring. I prefer to jump into the main game right away and then try to figure it out as I go. Just try out things. Q, W, E, what does this do? What does this do? What does this do? I'll try out a game, try to understand the flow of the game and just skip the whole tutorial, which is boring. Cause I don't like, I don't like the feeling of someone like leading a path for me. So I also don't like tour guides and I don't like asking the way when I'm lost. I prefer to just figure it out. And I don't mind if it costs me more time or if I don't initially know the way. And eventually I'll figure it out. I'm here, am I not? Like I got lost before, yes but I always found myself again. So I figured I'll just skip the intro week and then I'll just go on day six. So I skip Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and I'll go on Monday. So I show up the Monday and like everyone knows what they're doing. They know where they're going. They know what they want out of life. They have a job in mind that they want. They know why they're here what they want to learn, what they're going to learn. They know other people. They know how the uni works, where the canteen is. I didn't know shit. I knew nothing. So I show up on day six and I go to the uh, secretary, the, the front desk or whatever. And I'm like, where do I go? And they're like, are you signed up here? I'm like, yep. Uh, what's your name? Manuel Schenkhuizen. Well, I don't see you in the system. When did you sign up? August 14th. Well, that's two weeks too late. I'm like, is it still okay though? Is it still okay? She's like, uh, well, wh where, uh, didn't you learn all this in the intro week? And I'm like, I skipped the intro week because I wanted to play. Uh, and she's like, so you signed up late and you skipped the intro week. You are too late to sign up, but I think it might have been okay had you at least joined the intro week and show a little initiative and interest. I'm like, ah, I figured it's intro week. It's not so important. I'll figure it out later. She's like, no, it is important. Especially if you sign up late, we might've actually been lenient and let you sign up late. If you, at least you showed up. Well, she was like, what do I do with you? She was thinking then, uh, do you know who I am? No, I couldn't pull that card yet. <laughs> then, then she's like, well, maybe you can just join today and we can try to figure the rest out. Where are your books? <laughs> you paid right? No, I didn't pay yet. I didn't pay yet. I did take out a loan, which my family suggested that I should take out a loan for like three, 500 euros a month. It's called student loan. It's like three, 500 euros a month. And I took it out not knowing why, because I don't understand anything about money but I did save up all my clothing money. So in the Netherlands, very common is to get some pocket money every month. And they call it clothing money. 
and maybe it could be like 100 euros a month, which I thought was really generous, especially considering I preferred not to buy the clothing and save up the money for Magic the Gathering cards or for the future. So I act, and I had had a newspaper job and a hardware store job until this time. So I actually had a few thousand euros on the bank, maybe 6,000 euros on the bank or so, just saved up my entire childhood, uh, sometimes finding money on the floor or just, besides Magic the Gathering and a couple of items of clothing, I bought almost nothing. Uh, some food sometimes, snacks, right? So I didn't really need to take out a loan. 6K is actually enough for, uh, for uni in Netherlands. It wasn't that much. And I could just work a bit extra. But for some reason, I took out a loan anyway, just because it was advised. But I never paid anything for the uni yet. Yeah, she was quite nice, actually. She was quite nice. So she's like, where are your books? I'm like, maybe they're still coming. <laughs> she's like, which ones did you order? I'm like, I didn't order anything. I thought it's automatic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's like, no, it's not automatic. Did your parents order it for you? I'm like, no. So she's like, so let me get this straight. You signed up late. You skipped intro week. You're not in our system. You didn't order any books and you don't know where to be. For all intents and pur purposes, you did not sign up for this uni or this class. And we can't really help you right now. Better you figure things out first and try to see if you can join late. And I'm like, oh my God, my my life as I thought I know it is is completely differently. Now I have to go home and tell that I'm not actually signed up on the uni at all. <laughs> I have nothing. Yeah, she, she was quite surprised, no doubt. I so saw I, I knew nothing about yeah, I I knew nothing about how uni works. So I get home and my mother's like uh uh, home already? I'm like, yeah, I signed up late and I wasn't in the system, so uh, I, yeah, I'm not actually part of the uni. She's like, oh. Then I started year two of my sabbatical. I became a pr full time pro gamer. That's the end. That's the end and the beginning of everything. And the rest is history. <laughs> Let's go FFA number uh, number four. I host game name Grubby Four. Mm, scorched basin. <laughs> Let's go scorched. Scorched basin. Thanks for the sub, you Robin, Pound Delicious, Chrysley, Rain, and Save Orcas. Grubby, happy Warcraft birthday. Yeah, you too. Want to ask if it's possible to review the work on TM? I'll try to do it tonight after stream, Orcas. What did your brothers think? I never talked about uni with my brothers. None of my brothers went to uni. Two of my brothers went to work after high school. And uh, one of my brothers... Uh... uh did independent work after high school? You ever had a job? Like I said, I, I had a newspaper job and hardware job, but they were more like vacation jobs. Felt anxiety just from you telling the story, going home to parents, telling them something they don't want to hear. I had to do that a lot. Well, like I said, they didn't really care. They didn't really talk to me, so I had my friends online and my uh, my game. Do your brothers get jealous of your lifestyle? I don't know. I, I can WhatsApp them after stream and let you know tomorrow. Never really ask them. Most of them have kids, so either they're in jail with kids or they're very fulfilled with kids. Yo, you jealous of me, bro? <laughs> What's up?
Unfortunately, I was never good with money. Uh, yo, thanks for the sub, Embraker. Unfortunately, I was never good with money and didn't have good guidance when I was young. Hence, take these bits. I still have much to learn, Grub Hydra. <laughs> thanks, Anolan. Me too. If you want to talk sometime, let me know.